and welcome to the Working Title Show with Zach Sams. Here we are amidst the corona pandemic virus. I am in my fallout shelter. The world has changed and uh, we're all just trying to figure out how to live in it. And so the Working Title Show survives and here we are. We're doing it via Zoom and uh, we're going to give this a, we're going to give this a little run. And so what we're going to do right now during while we're all bedded down is we're going to have some of our, we're going to have some guests on to talk about kind of how they're working inside this new, this new world. And it really is worldwide. Every, I mean, around the world, people are doing things totally different than they ever have before. I mean, I'm in a closet for crying out loud, uh, recording this show. And so as the world has changed and we don't know exactly how long it's all going to be, we're all having to adapt. We're all having to do our business differently. And so that includes the show. So here we are. We're going to do the working title show via Zoom. We've got a great guest on with us today. His name is Dan Ali, and he is the president and CEO of Texas VA Mortgage. Dan, how are you? I'm doing well. And uh, to add on to what you were saying, yeah, it is, it is a changing time. I am reporting live from my son's bedroom. Yeah. My dog here in the background for security. So uh, it, it, it's can great. the dog smell coronavirus oh yeah definitely yeah. We, we've trained her to uh to do that so it's one of our <laughs> new skills nice man nice well i'm glad you're here and uh, i'm glad you can kind of you know shed some light on uh the mortgage industry but also you know how how you how you, you as a mortgage lenders are dealing with uh you know these this new environment and how y'all are still helping uh, your clients amidst all this. So, Dan, why don't you give us a little bit of background on you, how you got in the mortgage business. Tell us a little about your company and what y'all do. All right. So, Texas VA Mortgage uh, was established in 2012 uh, after I finished my MBA at SMU. I've been in the mortgage business since 2004. So, I I've seen um, a, a few ups and downs. Uh, especially 2008 was was a was a crazy time in the industry. Pretty much, interest rates went to seven percent. Uh, mortgage business was dead. So, um, so yeah, I, I've definitely seen a few waves there. Uh, we are a VA focused mortgage company, so uh, our goal is to help veterans purchase and refinance homes. Uh, awesome. That's not all we do, but that that is definitely our focus. Sure. Um, a, a lot of veterans right now are looking to refinance their home. It's a, it's a great time to do that. Interest rates are the lowest they've been historically. Um, and, you know, the requirements for a veteran are a lot, a lot less than a typical refinance. There's no income, no asset verification. Um, there's no appraisal necessary. So essentially, as long as we can save you money and reduce your rates, uh, we can help you. Uh, not to mention when you refinance your home, you also get to uh, skip two months of mortgage payments and, and get a refund check. So uh, a few other perks, but uh, right. back to, yeah, what we do, Texas VA mortgage, we're here to help veterans. Right on. So, um, and that, and, and, and that's great because, uh, you know, supporting uh, our veterans is just, you know, it's a great calling and, you know, you also get to do that uh, to earn your income. So it's kind of, it's a, a great way you're helping people with homes, but you're also helping our veterans with their homes. So that's yeah. fantastic. So Dan, let me ask you, um, during this, you know, this coronavirus thing, and I mean, the rates were pretty good even before this started, but, um, you know, now that we're in this, I mean, a couple things there that you mentioned uh, could be a real lifesaver for, for, for anybody, but e even our veterans. So, you know, a couple months, missing a couple months of payments while you're in this refinance um, and, you know, so many people are out of work and their incomes are down, that could be a huge benefit, you know, not to mention just uh, the reduction in your, uh, you know, your monthly payment. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, it, it is definitely, a, it's a great program created by the VA and it can, it's providing benefits to a lot of our veterans, especially during these, these crazy times that we're living in. Um, but I would like to pivot here and talk a little bit about forbearance. And, yeah. you know, these mortgage companies right now are offering you forbearance on your mortgage. And uh, what I do want to talk about there is, you know. Now, does, now Dan, does that mean that that uh, we don't have to pay our mortgages anymore? Exactly, that's a great question. Yeah. So there is a difference between forbearance and deferment. So deferment means, yeah, you get a few months off, no, no strings attached, 
you can walk, you know, you move on like business is normal. Right. Now, what banks are offering is a forbearance. What that means is you're going to pay me back later, meaning that, hey, I'll give you three to six months off, but in the end of the three or six month period, you will then either have to pay this mortgage company the entire months that you skipped, or they're going to lay that out on top of your mortgage payment. So if you if you do decide to go to the forbearance through the forbearance program, just be prepared for that because uh, you know three to six months down the line, it could be a worse off scenario for you. So really, you know what I'm getting at here is do the forbearance program if you truly do need it. it it's not a um, a free ticket to not make mortgage payments for a few months. Yeah. So is Dan, are all banks and lenders offering forbearance or is this a select few? How do you know if forbearance is even an option for you? Yeah. So uh, good question. And so your, your loan has to be backed by either Fannie or Freddie. Uh, we can share those links with you to see if your mortgage is being serviced by them. And okay. in that case, you would then be eligible for the forbearance program. Aside from that, even if your your bank is not backed by Fannie or Freddie, there are still ways to call your bank and and talk through that process. But also, um, you know, th this is a negotiation, right? So first of all, negotiate the forbearance because right. it, it, it's a conversation. It's not something that they even know how to, to orchestrate. Secondly, it's so well, know, well, well, Dan, right there, the, I think yeah. you bring up an important point because, you know, some people might think, well, you know, forbearance is out there, so I don't have to pay anything. But you're saying, you know, regardless of if you're with Freddie or Fannie or whoever your bank or your servicer is, you need to make that phone call and have the conversation, right? It's not just like, hey, pay if you can, don't pay if you can't. Do you need to let your servicer know, hey, we're, we're having to forbear here for a little while? Is that a conversation that needs to be made or had? Yeah, yeah. You definitely want to have that chat and, you know, the phone lines are just crazy right now. It's probably a two hour wait to even sport speak to your mortgage servicer, but it's necessary because first of all, you can negotiate your terms. And secondly, you want to get it in writing. So uh, the mistake a lot of people are making is, Oh yeah, my bank told me I'm good. I don't have to make payments. Uh, but if you got nothing in writing, you know, they kind of get to create the terms when the forbearance ends. Whereas mm -hmm. if you get it in writing, at least you know, or you're prepared for what's going to happen. Plus you have some kind of documentation, you know, you got to keep in mind, they talk to probably, I don't know, 5,000 people a day. And so oh, I'm sure it, that, it's, like, that, uh, you know, it's right after all this started and you, you, if you had an airline, you're about to fly on, you had to call in to get that changed. I mean, it was a three hour wait. Right, right. Um, so thank so God it, they have those callback systems now where you don't have to sit on the phone for three hours. I hope that uh, Fannie and Freddie <laughs> and the bank servicers have that too. <laughs> Completely agree. I, I feel like mortgage servicers should add that service as well. Uh, but yeah, just definitely get in writing, you know, just to protect yourself. They talk to so many people on a daily basis. So just as long as you have it in writing, at least you have backup to, you know, what you talked about and what you agreed upon with your bank. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I think, you know, you know, you mentioned it as well in the beginning as one of the tough, you know, pieces to all of this is the uncertainty, right? You know, you know, you listen to, depending on where you listen to your news or where you're getting from, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to always pinpoint the accuracy. So you hear these things like, oh, there's forbearance, there's forgiveness, you know, they're sending checks out, but, you know, there's no, they don't offer a roadmap to, to those programs or where to get them from. It's just kind of like, so you really kind of have to go figure that out. So I think you, you sharing that you need to have a conversation is probably a really good point because I think a lot of people just assume, well, the government's, you know, they're going to take care of it. You know, they pass legislation, but you know, there's a difference between passing legislation. And there actually being guidelines and guidance around how those things are actually going to work, right? Which I think a lot of it, we still don't know how it's going to work or it's going to change it 10 times before we get there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see how banks uh, handle this three to six months down the line on what they're going to do uh, with, you know, with these three or six months backs. Because, you know, you're really giving the bank leverage if you think about it. Because six months from now, if you can't afford to make the six months payment up front, nor can you afford to add that payment on top of your mortgage, I mean, you, you lose your equity. They, they can take your home. Yeah. You're now 
able to be foreclosed on. So again, it's very important to only do forbearance if you need the use of forbearance. Don't, don't take it as a free ticket because it has worse circumstances than you, than you would think down the line. Who should, um, who should a borrower, you know, discuss this with, you know, maybe outside of their bank, obviously they need to call their lender or their bank or their servicer, but is there any guidance? Is there any help that they can get from people to answer some of these questions on what they should do? Is that their financial advisor and attorney, yeah. like who, who should they consult with? Yeah. I mean, in that case, I would probably defer them to either their financial advisor, um, their CPA. Yeah. Or their, their mortgage broker or loan officer that they're working with, because, right. you know, in a lot of situations that, I'm, that are coming across the desk now is, hey, I got this guy who's looking to go to the forbearance program, but hey, maybe we can refinance him instead and help him, you know, to, to give away a few months of payments there and get yeah, a refund you get check. Yeah, three months off and doesn't have months, to And basically three months from now, you, you got the same thing, but you ended up with the lower rates and you have a lower payment going forward rather than going down the forbearance lane, which, you know, is, is only going to put you in a wor worse off position. Plus you're going to still pay the higher interest rate. Right. Absolutely. No, that makes really, really good sense. So, um, so what's the process with um, VA, you know, versus maybe, you know, your, your typical more conforming mortgage? Like what's, is there a different process? How can you give us a little idea of what some of the qualifications are? Um, obviously I think everybody knows you have to have been, you have to be a veteran or in the service, but right. are there, uh, are there, you know, are there extenuating circumstances or different rules that apply even for those people? How does it all play out? Yeah. Well, for, on the VA front, you know, it, it's pretty standard, no income, no asset, no appraisal. Uh, you have to reduce the interest rate by at least half a percent and you have to recuperate your cost within 36 months. So essentially your closing costs, have to be recuperated between the spread, the delta of your mortgage payment within 36 months. That's confusing, I know. That's what oh, I didn't know that. So, That's interesting. So we'll do that. We'll do that calculation for you. But yes, you have to recuperate your cost, meaning that you, you can't go into a situation that you know six months, six years from now, you still haven't recuperated the cost of refinancing your own. Right. Yeah. Which wouldn't have been a good move anyways. Right. 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 Yeah. So, okay. So, that that's the requirements. Uh, now, again, if you're not a veteran and you're just looking to refinance your home, uh, then yeah, income and asset play mainly just income. Cause you're not going to bring any money to a closing table on a refinance. We do have to reappraise your house, but recently because people have so much equity when running it through the desktop underwriting system, which is kind of like a system that tells me if you're approved, I'm getting a lot of appraisal waivers, meaning I don't have to even get an appraisal. All I have wow. to do is just prove, your income is still there um, and, and you know, you're able to refinance your home. A lot of banks nowadays are doing a verification of employment three days before funding. And that's, that's a new rule that they started about two weeks ago. And so yeah. because of a lot of people losing their jobs, unfortunately, they're making yeah. sure that they are still employed before they close on the loan. Um, that's one of the newer rules, but yeah, on that's, that's on the conventional side. And um you know, for them, it's also a great option. Now talking about conventional loans, there is, there has been capacity issues and I'm sure you've heard that word a lot. So what that means is there has been such a high influx of people refinancing that the banks are just extremely backed up. So right. expect for the process to take 60 to 90 days. Whereas before, you know, you could close a refinance in 15 to 20. Well, as you know, from the title side that we, we, we're seeing the same things, you know, it takes longer to, for the title work to come in. It takes a lot, everything takes a little bit longer. Everybody's working in, in different conditions, you know, where you're, you're in an office, you're efficient, everything you need is there. Now, all of a sudden you're trying to work from a laptop from home without the same bandwidth or capacity that you did before. And that's, that's not only the loan officer working that way, your title person might be working that way, your, you know, the, uh, the title plan, all, all the people involved are all working in a way they're not <laughs> very used to. So yeah, uh, it makes sense that it would, that the delays would be there, but you know, when you're in the middle of it, it's never fun to be delayed. Right. 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 Uh, other changes um, on the VA refinance product, they did 
changed the credit score requirement to 640. So essentially now if you have less than a 640, you don't qualify for the VA Earl program. I personally think that's temporary. I think that's just because of what's happening right now. And so according to VA guidelines, there should not be a credit score requirement. There is no credit score requirement, but the banks are creating an overlay to help protect themselves. And uh, so therefore they, they enacted a 640 minimum FICO across the board. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's been recent. That's been very recent. Right. So with credit, um, how long, if, if somebody's, you know, just below that line, how, how easy is it to fix? Do y'all offer solutions for that? You know, is that, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people think, ah, oh, my credit's not good enough. You know, and sometimes they're surprised what, that their credit actually is. So what, what are your recommendations in those situations? Yeah. Yeah. It, and you're absolutely right. You know, people, people's credit scores are higher than they think. Um, we, we do lots of volume. We did 25 million last month and, and the average credit score is six, six, seven. So higher than the 640. And so on that note, people have higher credit scores than they expect. But that said, if you have below 640, that does not mean that you don't apply. And the reason I say that is, A, there's already banks coming into the market that are going to start taking below the 640. So in the next few weeks, we're going to have options for them. Right. And secondly, um, I think in the next three months, you know, that, that's going to go away and we're going to go back to business as normal. So might as well start that process because the process itself is already taking so long might as well get it in queue, get through the, get through the loan process itself. And essentially we wait until either, you know, we have more banks come along that are willing to take below 640 or, um, you know, they, they, they release the, the requirement. So you see that as a moving target going yeah. forward on this? On this yeah. Program. Yeah. I, I would not say don't apply to refinance your home because you feel like your credit score is low, you know, uh, but that, that is currently what the banks are asking for is a 640. So how far, let me ask you this. So how far back, you know, are people, how long does it have to be before it makes sense to refinance again? Is there any set date or time or, you know, is there a benchmark there or, you know, somebody that closed on a home six months ago, does it make sense to even refi again or refinance that loan this quickly? Yeah, another good question. So 210 days is the rule on VA. So you have to wait 210 days, which is about seven months of mortgage payments before you can refinance your home again. Okay. If it makes sense, uh, the way, you know, we analyze if it makes sense. So typically when you buy a home, your interest rate is going to be higher. Uh, you know, uh, so you're, you're looking at four, four and a quarter, four and a half. That's m what most people are buying at. But when yeah. you refinance, you know, you're looking at sub three interest rates. So even though it's only been seven months since you just bought your home, just because of naturally rates are higher when you purchase and lower when you refinance, that already makes sense. But that's all part of the, you know, the, the payment analysis that we do for you when, when we go through each individual scenario, we'll take a look at your current scenario and we'll bring you to the new scenario and say, hey, look, this is you're gonna be your monthly savings. Do you think that, you know, we'll, and then we'll go through and if it makes sense for you or not. But to answer your question, yeah, it's 210 days um, it is the amount of period of time you have to wait before you can refinance your home. Interesting. Are you finding people that, you know, are beyond that 210, you know, days, or are you finding that, that people that did close, you know, 211 days ago that a refinance is actually making sense for them? Yeah. I have lots of them. Yeah. Um, lots because I, just because of the fact that you're two things. First, interest rates are falling so quickly. So six yeah. months ago, interest rates were almost a point higher. It's crazy yeah. to believe, but they were 1% higher than what they are right now. And, and what, uh, is, what, what does 1% typically mean in a, in a, for a monthly payment when that changes? I know it depends on the loan amount, loan but amount. Yeah. What's, what's the average loan amount you're doing and what does 1% change in that monthly payment? Is it significant? Uh, average, yeah. Average loan amount right now has been about 227000 and a 1% decrease in rate would yield probably about $150 savings a month. That could be, that could be substantial. So yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're talking thousands annually that you'd save, not to mention, we're not even considering the amount of money you're going to save in interest charges from paying this bank. Yeah. If, you, if you run that over a 30 year period, it's a lot. It's a, lot. It, it's, it, it's a really nice car. 
maybe two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you know your nice cars, Dan. I know that. I sure do. Yeah. <laughs> so, so kind of what I'm gathering here is, you know, whether you're a veteran or not, but, you know, specifically with your group, um, this is a call you should make and at least see what, what it looks like for you. Would you recommend that if you have, if you're a VA person and you haven't closed a loan within 210 days, does it make sense to check on this just Absolutely. to see what it would do? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a free analysis, right? You know, we're going to, we're going to spend 15 minutes with you and within 15 minutes, we're going to say, Hey, this is a good deal. Or, you know, in scenarios we say, look, maybe we should wait. I think we should wait six months and call us back. We're going to give you honest feedback. You know, we're, we're not here to sell you. We're here to help you. So, so in if, 15 if, minutes, you can actually tell somebody if they've got, you know, if there's, if it makes sense to take the next step and look at this. Most definitely. Most definitely. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I can draw up the entire loan scenario for you in 15 minutes. The only thing we ask that you have when you call is a, a copy of your recent mortgage statement. And that helps because that's going to have all the information pieces I need to run my analysis. Um, and that makes the conversation a lot easier. So definitely have a mortgage statement with you uh, when you do call in. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. Well, um, <coughs> excuse me. So that wasn't coronavirus. That was just, you know, normal, normal call. Uh, so Dan, how do we get, how do people get a hold of you? If you, if somebody is listening to this or like, you know what, uh, I need to, I need to check into this, see if this is something that could, you know, help me in my current situation and, you know, for the life of my loan. So how, how do you want people to reach out? Yeah. So you can email me dan at txvamtg.com. Uh, you can call our toll free line, which is eight four four six va loan Okay. Uh, or you can call my office line, 972-380-7254. All of those will be available available to you here after this podcast. But um, those are the, the three best ways to get a hold of me. A few other things I want to touch on real quick. Wait up, Dan, do you have a uh, website? Uh, yeah, we do. Sorry. Uh, the website is, is uh, sorry, texasvamtg.com. TexasVAMTG.com. Great. We will put that on the Facebook and blog pages for everyone to find. Perfect. Perfect. So a few of the things I've seen um, that I, I want to touch on, um, jumbo and non-QM loans are now no longer available. So uh, they've pretty much taken those out of the market. Uh, so if you're above a 510 in Texas, $10,000 loan amount, there's not financing options currently. So um, if you're looking to buy a home, you know, above that loan amount, you're going to have lots of difficulties. So uh, you, you may have to wait until they bring those products back. That's across the board with every bank. Is, is that a result of the virus for, uh, that, that they did that? Or is that for some other reason? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It's, be, it's because, of the, because of the economy going into a depression, uh, you know, anything above 510000 or whatever your jumbo limit is in your county, uh, you know, th they just don't want to take the risks on those loans because they're higher loan amounts. And, uh, you know, they, they feel like they're, they're protected under in, in conforming loans, but in jumbo loans, they, they don't want to lend any more money in those categories because that's a much higher loan amount to foreclose on. Is that Fannie and Freddie only? I, I mean, can banks still do those loans if they're servicing themselves? Or is that just any and all jumbos are non-existent at this moment? I've reached out to over 50 banks and none of them have jumbo products. Well, okay. I take that back. They do, but we're talking interest rates of 8%. Right. So I, at that point, they're pretty much going to refi for that. <laughs> <laughs> or even buy. Yeah. They, they, they're pretty much saying, don't do it. Don't right. Do it. So, so the luxury market sounds dead until, uh, unless you're paying cash or until the, until the uh, financing comes back. Right, right. And then the other thing uh, I'm seeing a lot of right now is cash out refinancing. So, uh, you know, over the last three years, everybody's increased their equities by 15 to 20 percent. And so therefore, they have a lot of money sitting in the equity of their house. But at the same time, currently, uh, they don't have an income or, you know, it's, it's gotten tough and they have acquired a lot of debt over the last three years. And so what we're doing is we're using the equity in their home to pay off all their debt and to give them some cash back if they'd like. 
uh, and, and also in the process, you know, reducing their rate and, and uh, giving them the benefits of refinancing. But uh, it, it's, been a, it's been a very useful tool for a lot of people because they, you know, you're paying at minimum credit card interest rates are 20 to 25 percent, a car loan, you know, four to five percent. So you're accumulating all that into one interest rate at a payment of three to four percent. And therefore, that combination is going to be a much lower monthly payment all in compared to all the different payments you were making. So cash out refinance is definitely a great place to look into if uh, you know if if you're looking at debt and you're and you see it mounting up. That's interesting, and um, yeah, and that makes sense, especially in these times. So, so the, so the two so the refinances that you're seeing the most of are they cash outs and then just I guess a rate and term reduction? Or the, is that the most common? Yeah, yeah, the, correct. Those, those are the two most common. So I'd say more people are leaning towards cash out right now. Uh, but if you're not in the need of cash out, you just want to get that lower interest rate, which is very low uh, compared to anybody's interest rate right now. It's yeah, rate and term. But uh, yeah, th th those are definitely the, the, the two most prominent. Interesting. Well, that's, uh, that's very good information, Dan. We appreciate it. So um we will uh, we will link to your information so people can get a hold of you and uh, you know appreciate you Dan for just offering a great service not only to you know our veterans but just to Americans out there that uh, really are facing some tough decisions and you know this could be a solution that kind of you know carries them uh, over the hump so to speak uh, until the uh, economy and our nation gets back on track and back to work so. Thank you so much for being on the show and for, uh, you know, give us in, giving us that information. And um, we, we really appreciate it. I hope you'll come back on soon just to kind of give us an update on where we are, because probably next week we might be out of date and there might be all new, <laughs> might be all new guidelines, new rates and, you know, who knows what. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And uh, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, you having me on your podcast. Of course. And it's my pleasure to help veterans my pleasure to provide the information that's what we're here for absolutely absolutely well god bless you dan take care of yourself and uh let's get on the golf course soon i'd love that yes sir all right take man. care buddy take care